We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Those of you watching us on video, you know the Yuletide spirit is in the air. I'm wearing my Santa red. And Amrita Raichan looking lovely as always. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. I'm looking like a nice Christmas tree, <laughs> am I not? <laughs> so we're complimenting each other. Very Merry Christmas to all our Radio 1 listeners. It's amazing, isn't it, Amrita, how this traditional Christian festival that celebrates the birth of Lord Jesus Christ has become a secular family holiday. Both Christians and non-Christians alike celebrated. We got the tree out a week ago and the <laughs> girls, both my daughters were busy decorating it, spent a few hours on it. Then they redecorated it. Then they decided to buy some more appendages and things like that. So much excitement. So much fun. And I've been doing that with my studio and creating Christmas recipes. And it is really, really beautiful time of the year. And yeah, we don't have to be Christian to celebrate Christmas today. Interestingly, Rishi, did you know that... Uh, 25th December, we obviously celebrate uh, Christmas because we follow the Gregorian uh, calendar. But some Eastern Orthodox churches continue to use the Julian calendar for religious observances. Hence, they celebrate Christmas on January 7th. Uh, these would include certain parts of Russia, Greece uh, and Africa. Interesting, huh? Now, I, I want to know what Chris, Christmas literally means. And who better to tell me than you? <laughs> well, literally, Mass on Christ's Day. Oh, yeah. Christmas, Christmas. Okay, yes, cool. <laughs> but it is actually, you know, the whole, uh, this whole meaning, the whole celebration of Christmas is of a very fairly uh, recent origin. Uh, in fact, even the date of birth of Jesus Christ was attributed to December 25th, approximately only uh, three and a half centuries after the birth of Christ. In fact, the Bible doesn't say when he was born. And the few clues that we have, like uh, shepherds guarding their flocks uh, outside, you've seen, you must have seen so many paintings and so many depictions yeah. of that, clearly tells us that it couldn't have been winter, right? Because how could people be out at that time? Uh, now, a widespread explanation of the origin of this particular date by the Britannica Encyclopedia is that December 25th was the Christianizing um, of the day of the birth of the unconquered sun. This used to be a popular holiday in the Roman Empire that celebrated winter solstice as a symbol of the resurgence of the sun and starting date uh, for spring and summer. Christian uh, writers frequently made the connection between the rebirth of sun, S-U-N, and the birth of the sun, S-O-N. And that's 25th December, stuck as the birthday of Lord Jesus. Wow! <laughs> now I'm going to come to how did Santa Claus originate? The concept of Santa Claus. I mean, it's inseparable, isn't it? Christmas and Santa Claus. I've heard ridiculous stories, <laughs> really ridiculous stories, Amrita. Like, for example, somebody who makes colas yeah. said, oh, you know, we in the 1920s, we dressed up, uh, you know, this, this fat, jolly old man in our cola colors. And we did a campaign. And since then, he was called Santa Claus. But... There's got to be some kind of mythological connection or some kind of miracle attached to this. No, but you're absolutely right, Rishi. In fact, the evolution of Santa Claus has actually uh, been a fascinating blend of historical figures, folklore, literature and commercial influences like you just mentioned. And that has actually resulted in our beloved Santa that we know today. Having said that, the origin of Santa Claus can be traced back uh, to a Christian saint named Saint Nicholas. Um, he was very known for his generos generosity, kindness, and in fact, um, uh, that kind of gave birth to a lot of, uh, you know, tales that spoke about the miracles that he performed. So apparently once he had thrown some gold through a window to this poor child uh, or girl who was being sold for slavery and it landed up in a uh, in a stocking that was hanging by the fireside. Uh, and this uh, became uh, such a well-known story that children in the hope of St. Nicholas, uh, poor children particularly, in the hope of St. Nicholas helping uh, them, also started hanging uh, stockings outside uh, or near their fire, you know, near the fireplace uh, at the windows. In fact, by the Middle Ages, his devotion extended to all parts of Europe and December 6th was celebrated as St. Nicholas Day when gifts were exchanged uh, throughout Christian Europe. However, with the passage of time, uh, his name kept evolving. And in Holland, where his legend uh, persisted, he was referred to as Sinterklaas, 
S I N T E R K L A A S, a Dutch variant of the name Saint Nicholas. Now, Dutch colonists took this special tradition with them to the American colonies in the 17th century. Santa Claus was then adopted by the country's English speaking majority under the name Santa Claus, and his legend of a kindly old man was united with old Nordic folk tales of a magician who punished naughty children and rewarded good children. With presents now, like we've discussed, <laughs> Rudolph Red Nose Reindeer. <laughs> yes, and you know we've discussed this many times, even on Beyond the Plate, how Americans are great marketeers. So by the 19th century, the United States converted the image of Santa Claus from a thin, tall saint with a long beard to a jolly and plump man who flew in uh, a sleigh pulled by a reindeer and entered homes through the chimneys. Ah, uh, current very loving Santa. Well, at least with the beard intact. So I'll take jo- I'll take jolly and beard and paunch any day. <laughs> this is more huggable, isn't it? Yes, more teddy bear. This is more lovely. Huggable, yeah. And now to the the most favorite part of Christmas for me, which is the Christmas feast. I mean, it's wonderful. You sit down with East Indians in Ranwa village in Bandra. Or you go to Goa and you sit with the Goan Catholics, or you go to Calcutta and you sit with the Anglo Indians. It is just lovely, and there is so much food. Whoa! <laughs> love the currants, love the apricots, love the the wine, love the Christmas pudding, love mm. the Christmas cake, everything. But who better to tell us about it than you? Well, yes, all of this comprised the Christmas feast, and you know, frankly, even uh, even uh, even Scrooge will crack a smile when he sees the Christmas feast, isn't it? How interesting, Rishi, that you actually took the names of these four or five things, which originated in medieval times. This tradition has been going on through eons, and um, believe it or not, the tradition of having a feast. Uh, always was celebrated with changing of seasons um and was celebrated with a plum uh, naturally food used to be the main focus because one had to feast before the famine of the winter solstice often meant the arrival of the first frost so animals would be culled and the meat would be frozen to survive the winter you spoke about alcohol fermented beverages like beer and wine were brewed in the spring and they were finally ready to drink at the winters to you know give warmth to the body Hence, feasts mainly comprise of roasts. We've heard of that. We've seen it uh, being the star of all Christmas feasts. Uh, and of course, then not all vegetables were available. But we spoke about a lot of amazing root vegetables in the last episode of Beyond the Plate. Now they are also equally important uh, parts of our Christmas feasts. So you have these delicious glazed carrots. You have amazing uh, sweet potato bake. Uh, well, the list goes on. Now. Can a party be complete without dessert? I'm sure you will definitely not. <laughs> you you will agree with the fact that it no is not. No <laughs> chance that it's complete without dessert. Yeah. Exactly. So in came Christmas puddings. Even then, now as uh, spices started coming into use, uh, all the people started using them in their dessert. They also started including exotic dried fruits, like some of the ones that you mentioned: raisins, currants, apricots. They started getting included in the very popular Christmas pudding that was uh, that was the dessert of those times. The alcohol that they had fermented that would be added to preserve these puddings for long. Of course, with uh, time, Christmas pudding turned into Christmas cake when ingredients like sugar, uh, lard, and butter came along, and. Uh, I have to tell you this. I have to add here that uh, usually making a Christmas cake in the traditional way takes months because you know you use all the wine, you you mull the uh, mull it, and you use it in uh, the Christmas cake. I have come out with a super easy, quick recipe and have shared it in my entire Christmas repertoire that I have shared on my YouTube channel. So guys, please do check it out on Amrita Raichan Chef and Beyond. You will get a super easy and as delicious Christmas. a christmas cake recipe um that you would get in the market which has been made after months of preparation all right um you have a bit uh, to share before i move on to uh, the next very important aspect of christmas food items totally uh, the ask amrita section comes up at the end of the show 9833943943983339439439 please ask any question diet related food related nutrition related festival food related for example christmas which we're talking about now or christmas food uh, and pop your name in the whatsapp 
uh, along with your question. All questions will be taken up at the end of the show and answered. There's also a recipe of the week, which you not only hear here on the radio, 94.3 FM in Bombay, Delhi, Bengaluru and Chennai. It's also up on our Instagram handle at 94.3 Radio 1 India and on Amrita's Insta handle, which is Amrita Raichand. Uh, there's an elongated version of it on Chef and Beyond, which is Amrita's YouTube channel. Now continue. So we spoke about... Christmas, we spoke about Santa Claus, we spoke about food. What do you think we're missing? What is Christmas most, uh, why is Christmas most loved by children? Marshmallows. Also. <laughs> and because they get so many gifts, right? Yeah, gifts, yeah. yeah but Under today, the Christmas tree, yeah. Yes, but today we can go out, buy gifts for friends, for our families. But those days, you know, obviously there was no concept of buying gifts, but people were pretty large-hearted then, and they also wanted to give gifts to each other. They also wanted to be prepared for uh, guests when they arrived to their homes unannounced at these times. So uh-huh. what did they do? Now these pies and pies and cakes that they would make could not easily be shared. So they started the culture of making cookies. And that's how Christmas cookies are very popular because uh, with all the ingredients that were available, they would shape them out, cut them into small, uh, you know, cute uh, uh, pieces and store it uh, for guests who would come in. They would give it as gifts uh, to their children. Lovely. Now let's come to the recipe of the day and it's got to be Christmassy. It is Christmassy. The other very fun, uh, you know, fun, most loved Two ingredients of Christmas are also chocolate and mint. Uh, You know, people add that to their hot chocolate. Uh, They make cookies also with chocolate and mint. Uh, And by the way, I forgot to tell you one more thing about cookies, which I which I think is very important. Children used to leave out these cookies for Santa. Uh, It was also instilled in them by their parents that you should have the sense of gratitude. Santa brings you so many gifts. Yeah, it's a little return (laughs) gift for uh, Santa and for the reindeer milk. Uh, But today um, I am going to be sharing a very exciting recipe of something with mint and chocolate and it's super easy and that can also be used for gifting purposes for Santa and for your friends and family. I'm going to be sharing uh, the recipe of mint chocolate truffles with pistachios. This is a very easy recipe. All you have to remember is the ratio of chocolate to cream. Truffles uh, have to be thick and chocolatey. So two parts of chocolate, one part of cream. So depending on the quantity that you want to make, you can just keep this ratio in mind. So for example, if I am using 400 grams of chocolate, I will take 200 grams of cream. What am I going to do with the cream? I'm going to just boil it with a little bit of mint fresh mint leaves uh, and no artificial flavoring just bring it to a slight boil uh, cool it slightly and then add it to your chopped chocolate Uh, allow the chocolate to melt completely then put it in the fridge to set a little so that you can actually turn them into soft balls truffles are chocolatey and uh, you know and gooey Uh, so once you turn them into uh, these balls you have to make sure that you do it in a cool temperature so that they don't melt again and then usually you coat it with uh, you know just cocoa powder uh, even some cinnamon uh, sugar but what I like to do is add a dose of health to it so I have uh, grounded I would recommend ground pistachios lovely green pistachios again a great combination with mint and chocolate and I roll these uh, truffles in a pow- uh, in a plate of powdered pistachios sounds inviting yeah <laughs> malicious but guess what instead of <clears throat> truffles today I've actually brought some cookies for you um, mm. which again the recipe has been shared on YouTube on Instagram so I would love for everybody to check them out awesome the ask come to the section as Sumit Please suggest some root vegetables that one can use in soups to add depth and richness. Uh, This is going by last week's episode where we talked about root vegetables. Yes. uh, So my favorite, all time uh, favorite root vegetable to play with uh, soups is pumpkin. And in fact, I am going to be making a wonderful recipe of uh, pumpkin soup. I find people, uh, you know, people, very often, this is the feedback I've got from people that they find pumpkin too heavy in soup. They find it a little boring, too sweet. So I've uh, got a interesting twist to it. I like to use Thai flavors to kind of uh, uh, spice up the sweetness and cut the sweetness of pumpkin. Uh, Also, the other trick I use is I add some bottle gourd to kind of bring down the heaviness of pumpkin. Uh, I'm going to be sharing this recipe soon, so watch out for it. 
Merry Christmas, everybody who's watching, listening. Till next week then on Beyond the Plate from me, Rishi K and Chef Amrita Raichand. It's bye-bye. Bye-bye. Merry Christmas. Have a great day. 94.3 Radio 1.